Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time we're looking at Living Skyrim 4 by Forgotten Glory, released for Skyrim Special Edition. The version I've been playing on is version 4.0, released on the 17th of February 2023, and you can check on the list discord linked below for any changes and updates. And just before starting, Living Skyrim was actually the first ever list I reviewed back in 2021, so it's good to be back. Anyway, what is Living Skyrim for? The description reads, Living Skyrim is a full featured overhaul of Skyrim SE with the intent to breathe life into the often empty areas of the world. NPCs, quests, new world spaces and interactive content are the focus of this mod list. And all of this on top of a beautiful graphics package. You can download Living Skyrim from the Wabberjack Modlist installer, and I won't be getting into the specifics of the installation, but it's explained with a step-by-step -step guide on their own website. And if you want further help with the download, you can watch my Wabberjack Explanation Guide video on my channel and linked below. So, with over 1000 mods, you'll need around 220GB of storage to download. And once installed, the guide talks you through some mods you may want to enable, but none of it is necessary and you can get to playing right away. No in-game configurations needed. The graphics are befitting of the name Living Skyrim, as it looks like Skyrim, but with more going on. A prime example of this is all the new flora scattered about, with mods like Skyrim 3D Trees and Plants, Happy Little Trees, Folkvanger, and a bunch more all working together to add density to forests, and just more plant diversity overall. As for the textures, mods like Skyrim HD create the base, with a focus of providing a higher resolution flavour to Skyrim's vanilla aesthetic. As for the weathers, Cathedral Weathers and Seasons is used to create a high quality sky that changes based on the time of year, and they improved with the Enhanced Volumetric Lighting and Shadows mod which makes the graphics feel far more natural and it syncs shadows with the moving sun and moon. Next up is the EMB, with Rudy EMB being used by default. Personally, I find it works perfect with this list, where it doesn't lean into being too dark or too vibrant, just a good middle ground that feels like an improved Skyrim. Although, if you do want a look that focuses more on one side, there's pre-installed EMBs that you can freely swap between. There's even EMB presets which focus on performance, which segues to my next point. My overall FPS stuck around 50 to 60, depending how dense the area was. So for how much this list adds, it runs really well. But of course, all the added NPCs and buildings can certainly be taxing on the old PC. Although, there is a performance profile you can enable before you start playing, which, as the name suggests, makes the list run better on lower end systems, with a slight hit to the graphics. So this, plus the performance EMBs, means that most mid-range PCs will have a perfectly fine time running this. Oh, and as a final note, anti-aliasing was turned off by default, so if it's the same for you and you find jagged edges a bit distracting, you can switch on TAA in the Befini tool that comes with the install. The list author has mentioned how roleplay is a core concept of this list, where you can act like an actual character with a unique backstory and traits. The first part of this is done through the levelling, where the experience mod makes it so you level up through completing quests and exploring, and with the special perks from questing mod, you'll gain unique new powers and abilities after completing certain quests, showing how your character is progressing. Once you have perk points, there's a huge amount of new perks to unlock through the adamant mod, which balances existing perks and adds powerful new ones to improve build variety. Plus the Scion and Man Beast mods are included on top, which overhaul vampire and werewolf abilities to make them into far more balanced playstyles. There's also many other mods included by the same author, Simon Magus. There's Apothecary for an alchemy overhaul, new enchantments added with Formaturgy, racial abilities from the Aetherius mod, and Pilgrim, which adds benefits for worshipping a deity. Moving on, there's a number of mods which change up trade and bartering, where now prices are far more harsh at the start, but there's new skills included to become better at haggling, 
You can even trade with more NPCs, and use the honed metal mod to order equipment to be crafted for you. Speaking of equipment, the loot you find in the world has also had dramatic changes. The quality of loot you find in chests and such are more determined by its difficulty, and overall, valuable items are harder to find, although the chests found at the end of the dungeon are tweaked to feel more rewarding. And if you want to get this loot while sneaking around, you'll have to be far more careful, as guards are more alert, and the realistic AI detection mod makes sneaking far more complex, with weather and light sources affecting your sneak skill. There's also new spell mechanics, with the first big change being made by the Spell Forge mod. It makes it so you no longer have to learn spells from tomes, and instead you have to learn them from combining ingredients at a new crafting forge. Next is the Smart Cast mod, which allows you to set conditions for when a spell is cast. As a basic example, I can make it so I automatically use healing spells when I drop below 50% health, although it gets far more in depth than that, including options to cast multiple spells at once. Finally, no survival mods are included, although there is the Campfire Camping mod for those who like to live in the wilderness, and I'll mention more survival stuff later on in the add-on section. Living Skyrim aims to modernise the combat and make it far more interesting, which does make things more difficult, but definitely not too difficult. One of the key combat mods is Valhalla Combat, which has a large focus on stamina management, where now, light attacks that hit the enemy regenerate stamina, whereas ones that miss cost extra stamina, and if you let it run out, you'll become exhausted and deal less damage. The mod also introduces a stun system, where every enemy has a stun meter which drains from combat, and once fully depleted, they'll be left more vulnerable and open to execution attacks, much like how the new God of War games play. The next mod is Modern Combat Overhaul, which on the surface is a reanimation mod, where weapon swings now feel far more different from one another. But most importantly, it forces you to commit to every strike you make, so you can no longer glide around as you're swinging, and will be open to enemy attacks if you don't time it right. These changes are felt most in third person, where every strike has far more weight behind it, and just looks more natural. Plus it pairs with the True Directional Movement mod, which improves third person movement and adds target locking. To balance things out with these movement changes, there's TK Dodge, which adds a nifty dodge roll mechanic. Plus the Precision mod adds a ton of features to weapon swings. There's now hit reactions, camera shake, weapon trails, and more. And finally, there's Know Your Enemy Redux, which adds resistances and weaknesses to NPCs based on their background. So for example, fire elementals have a weakness to cold damage, and armoured enemies have resistances to blunt weapons. Many of the biggest and best quest mods are included, such as the Forgotten City, Clockwork, Vigilant, and Brumer, all of which provide hundreds of hours of content, with new lands, quests, NPCs, items, and more. Plus smaller quests are added, with the Missives mod and Side Quests of Skyrim, which add more Radiant quests to complete, and help you gain favour with NPCs. On top of this, a huge amount of vanilla quests have been tweaked, with new dialogue options, and unique ways to complete them. As for the world itself, this is where the name Living Skyrim really comes into play. The goal is to make Skyrim feel more alive, giving NPCs their own lives and stories to tell. The mods Citizens of Tamriel and Inconsequential NPCs add hundreds of unique and fully voiced characters to find across the land, all naturally fitting as if they were always there. And the same goes for enemies, with new enemies and random encounters found wherever you go. And moving on to the actual landscape itself, towns and cities have been tweaked to better fit its growing population. JK Skyrim, Cities of the North, The Great series of mods, and more all work in tandem to make the populated areas feel far denser. Each city feels like a huge new location, and towns and villages feel like little communities scattered about. Then finally there's player homes, with over 20 new high quality player homes scattered about to find. All of the audio has either been made clearer or overhauled with more accurate sounds, including the Phoenix Compendium, which has a ton of new effects for NPCs and creatures. 
It's also worth noting that because of the hundreds of new NPCs scattered about, every now and then you'll find one that's voiced at a poorer quality to the rest. It's nothing that I found off-putting, but it does stand out if you're sensitive to that kind of thing. There's also a bunch of new music on top, with music mods like Hun Lovas, Around the Fire, and Melodies of Skyrim, adding hundreds of hours of new tunes for the background. And I've not heard them all, but the ones I have heard all seem to fit nicely. Have a listen to the audio for yourself. If you're hungry, Polda has some stew straight from the fire and some mead to sate your thirst. Keep your eyes straight ahead and your mind looking back. My name is Elduin. I've come to Whiterun for the Skyforge and for Farangar. Son of a... It's nothing. Mod bundles like Skyrim Weapons Expansion are combined with more individual weapon mods to add hundreds of new items across the world. You'll find a high quality version of every weapon type, all of which fitting naturally into Skyrim. And the same goes for armors, with the Armor Variance mod being accompanied by a ton of new unique armors. And combined with every added quest mod, there's probably over a thousand new clothing options to discover. As for spells, the Mysticism mod balances existing spells while including powerful new ones of its own, such as spells from previous Elder Scrolls games. And there's also Trimverate, which adds 75 new spells focused around new mage archetypes, with those being Druid, Shadow Mage, Warlock, Cleric, and Shaman. Finally, focusing on loot as a whole, the Narrative Loot mod adds over 1,600 new miscellaneous items found across Skyrim. This includes stuff like paintings, books, and pottery. And while it might sound mundane, it helps breathe life into the world and breaks up the monotony of finding the same kind of useful items in every single location. For some extra points to talk about, the Reading is Good mod means that some books will permanently boost your levelling speed for a specific skill, rather than just levelling up that skill like usual. Nordic UI is combined with a number of other UI mods to create the HUD that you see here. Realm of Lorkhead adds a large character creation area, where you can pick your starting location, starting items, and even traits and curses for your character. Carriage and Ferry Travel Overhaul adds new carriage stops and more shores accessible via boat. And finally, there's a huge amount of new followers, including Lucio, Inigo, Hoff, Lucifer, Katana, Corgis, and more. Now for some additions to the list, but first I must stress, any changes you make to the list has nothing to do with the mod list author. You should only do so if you have an understanding of modding and accept that any consequences are yours to deal with. And if you wonder why I always say this, the Modifying Living Skyrim page on their website sums it up well. These list authors spend a long old time making their lists work exactly how they intended, and so including your own mods on top is just a whole separate thing that's not their problem. Anyway, going against exactly what I just said, I'm going to suggest some mods, or actually just a mod. I'm someone who's always preferred survival mode, so if you're like me, you could give the Sunhelm mod a try, as it's very lightweight and adds all the hunger, thirst and fatigue mechanics you could want. I've not tried it for myself, but usually it works well with lists. But if you want more survival mods that affect the weather and such, it's not really recommended as there's just too many clothing and armour mods that need to be compatible. Also, when you're setting up this list, the guide explains how to configure ultra-wide, switch EMBs, and toggle on the quick loot mod, so it's got a lot of areas covered. With Living Skyrim being my first ever Wabajack list, it feels good to see how far it's come. It goes all in on making Skyrim feel like a living, breathing world, and this simple idea makes a ton of difference. In vanilla Skyrim, every town and city you visit can quickly feel small, where you know every building and NPC after being there for a couple of days. But Living Skyrim brings back that wonder of, ooh, what's that? 
Ooh, what's over there? If you get what I mean. I just found myself compelled to approach everything, like entering Riverwood for the 1000th time, and seeing some new guy chilling by the water. It just immediately makes me go, oh, who are you? There's a clear focus on making everyone in the world feel like a unique person with their own story to tell, and the same goes for yourself. There's a satisfying amount of customization and roleplay options to really make your character stand out from the last. And paired with the huge amount of quests on offer, everyone playing this list will have a different story to tell. There's an overall sense of polish to this list. It's called Living Skyrim 4 because, you know, there was three before this. And you can really feel that the author has had plenty of time to clean up bugs and focus on what makes this list fun. So yeah, if you're looking for a refreshing roleplay experience, with hundreds of hours of new content, Living Skyrim is a perfect choice. Also, before wrapping things up, I just want to say thank you to Forgotten Glory. When I made my very first video on this channel with no subscribers, you acknowledged it and helped bring the modding community this way. So yeah, thank you. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow, and let me know in the comments what lists you want me to cover. I also have a Twitch where I stream every now and then, and a Discord where we talk about mod stuff or anything else. Other than that, big thank you to my Patreon supporters, CR Van Weren, Tyler Pullin, Janice, Jake Carlo, Dweezil Peepants, Rook, Alec Bentley, Jackmar, and Christian Howell. I can't thank you enough for these contributions, and it helps me spend more time on the channel and make, you know, these side videos like I did the other day with the AI one. You know, it's just fun and I can actually afford to use my time to make that stuff. So thank you so much. And I also have a coffee account if you want to give a little one-time donation. But uh, thank you everyone and farewell.